welcome to Generational Wellbeing with Dr. Lom. Thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lom, a board-certified pediatrician who's passionate about bringing awareness to patents that have led to disease and providing simple practical tips on how to start making changes from disease to wellness. Thank you again for joining me. Please like, subscribe, and share with anyone you think could benefit from watching this. Today, I will be talking about temper tantrums. Yes, temper tantrums. Have you ever been in a grocery store and you see the toddler just screaming down the aisle with the parents super frustrated and overwhelmed and either leaves the grocery cart and does not finish shopping, carrying the child out of the grocery store, or just rushing through uh, to not completing the grocery shopping and pretty much rushing through. Or have you ever been in the car ride where the kid who just screams through uh, the car ride all the way home out of frustration? I have been there a few times myself, so I understand even though frustrating, it is a normal, absolutely normal uh, uh, developmental stage for kids. Um, typically occurring between one and three years of age. Um, these kids at around this time are not able to express how they feel. So as a result of not knowing the words to express those feelings on the inside, they express it through behaviors. Behaviors like kicking, like biting, like screaming, whining, and even breath holding spells just to try to figure out how things work. Uh, why does this typically happen? Oftentimes it's because they're either tired or hungry or they're not getting what they want. Or sometimes they're just seeking um, attention from their parents. So how do we manage these behaviors? First, think of this as a teaching opportunity. So the first step I usually would say is just stop, pause, breathe. Think before you react. Why is this important? Because you have to try to um, show the child how to manage uh, a very difficult emotion. Because our, we are like the thermostat for our kids. If we lose our cool, when we're frustrated, they will follow us suit. They will lose their, their cool. If we get super frustrated and angry, the behavior even gets worse. But we can look at it as this is an opportunity for me to teach my toddler how to manage their behavior. So being calm and cool teaches them where when they're frustrated in the future, when they're not getting what they want, instead of kicking and fighting and getting into fights, you can pause, you can calm, and you can breathe, and then you can act. Second, acknowledge the behavior. When you do that, um, it teaches them, I see you, I understand, I hear you. That creates a connection, that creates trust, where in the future, if they're going through something really overwhelming, they can come to you, they'll trust you enough to come to you with their feelings. Quite often, we there is a tendency or the temptation to dismiss the behavior. Oh, it's okay, I mean, is that all? Uh, you'll be fine, I've done that a few times. I'll admit, but still working on it. <laughs> but it's easier to build that relationship when they can trust you. When you dismiss it, it's like their behaviors or their feelings don't count. You don't see them, you don't understand them, which will lead to a difficult relationship between you and your child when they become um, uh, teenagers. The next thing, yes, even though I understand how you feel, Kicking and biting when you feel this way is not acceptable. So we have to set limits. It's the time to set boundaries and limits to them where, yes, I understand, I love you so much, but you were not gonna destroy property. You're not gonna kick or bite your siblings when you're feeling frustrated. And, and next, I say distract. These kids have a short attention span. I hear parents say, oh, they can barely sit for five minutes or two minutes and they're all over the place. This is the time we use it to our advantage. This is the time where I'll distract you, give you something to color. And before you know it, you forget what you were crying about in the first place. That usually helps calm them uh, down a bit sooner, especially when you distract them to an activity that is kind of soothing and calming. And once they're finally calm, and then you can praise them for 
being uh, for being calm or for soothing themselves. Good job coloring there and stuff because once we praise the behavior, we reinforce what we're looking for uh, with them. So how do we keep the temper tantrums from happening? Um, we can do this by setting consistent schedules, especially around bedtime and feeding time. Because again, the tantrums typically happen when they're tired or when they're hungry. So if we have a consistent bedtime routine, we're not letting them stay up until they're ex excessively tired, so we're limiting the tantrums. Or we have a consistent time where we're eating, it helps to limit it too. Secondly, try not to over schedule or, or put too many things on your schedule. Life happens, I know, and sometimes we have to keep rushing. But if it is unavoidable, prepare for it. So if I have to rush to the grocery store before heading home and I know my toddler will be tired, I will find something that will distract him again through the, um, or soothe him through the, while I'm doing my grocery shopping, where she's, uh, or he or she's entertained while we're going grocery shopping. At least that will soothe them in the meantime and avoid the tantrums. Um, that typically helps too. The next thing we can do is to help teach feelings and emotions. There are a lot of emotion charts where, with different feelings. So teaching them different emotions that go with the feelings. I'm sad, I'm happy, and stuff like that that is outside of the tantrum. So they can try to help them to express those emotions when we get into a state where they're either upset or frustrated. And then next thing we can do is help teach them calming um, uh, coping skills like listening to music, going out to walks, breathing technique. All these can be done when they're calm, but once you practice it long enough and that time comes, it's easy to revert back to breathing after you've been practicing. Rather than trying to do it while they're having the tantrums, that never works, yes. So, and lastly, what I'll say is, do not give in to the tantrum. It's easy to give in sometimes, but when we do, we are reinforcing the behavior and when we reinforce and reward the behavior, it becomes even worse. They will start doing crying even longer, banging their head, doing whatever it would take to get what they want. So be strong, be consistent, do not reward that behavior and be patient. Remember, this is a teaching opportunity and we are teaching them how to manage those emotions and we're teaching them how to, and it's a time for us to connect with them too and build relationship with them. Hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe, share, leave your comments, um, ask questions, and let me know what other topics you'd like to talk about. Thank you again for listening. Again, I'm Dr. Lum. Until next time.